Finding a good recommendation for a solid CPU cooler is not all that difficult nowadays. But another question does come up is, does the fan speed on that CPU cooler matter? Let's find out. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. Special thanks to Scythe for sending out the Ninja 5 cooler and the upgraded fans for it for me to test this all out for you guys. So let's get right into it, shall we? So the test bench that I'm going to be using is my standard test bench Xeon E5-1620 CPU. That's a 130 watt CPU. And if you stress a CPU like that, it puts it in the same TDP range as a lot of the modern CPUs, including the 105 watt Ryzen's as well as the, I guess, 95 watt ish ish I, I guess you could say <laughs> uh intel cpus you know never mind those they, they can take a lot of a uh, lot of wattage or they can output a lot of wattage but uh this should be relatively accurate for that use case it also has 64 gigs of ram and an rx 560 gpu for today's tests the synthetic test consists of prime 95 version 29.8 and uh, we're going to be doing blend for 20 minutes and the ambient temperature in the room is 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 25.5 degrees Celsius. All right, got my notes right here. Uh, the Hyper 212 peaked at 72 Celsius, averaged about 70 Celsius and idled at about 35 Celsius. The Scythe Ninja 5 with the stock 800 RPM fans, which are very silent uh, in this case. I think they're about 15 decibels. They peaked at 68 Celsius, averaged 63 Celsius, and idled at 33 Celsius. Now the idle to me, I don't, I don't think that's too important to, for comparison. It was a two degree drop in idle, but it was a seven degree drop in average, and the peak drop is still only a few degrees, four degrees to be exact. And uh, I mean, that's an obvious improvement. So let's move on to the 1200 RPM fans in the same test. The 1200 RPM fans, they peaked at 66 C, that's two degrees C less than the stock fans. They averaged, uh, it averaged 62 C, uh, which is only like one degree less again than the uh, stock. And then it idled at 31 C, which is about two degrees C. Now it was a noticeable difference in temperatures in this sort of peak testing scenario, but I feel like it's just not getting pushed hard enough and that's why the temperatures are relatively close together. This CPU cooler just looks to have a ton of headroom. Onwards to the gaming temps. With the 1200 RPM fans on there, PUBG averaged 53 degrees Celsius, uh, Apex Legends averaged 51 degrees Celsius, and Battlefield 5 averaged 58 degrees Celsius. Now the Hyper 212 in Apex Legends uh, average 58 so there was a seven degree drop with this cooler with the upgraded fans and then it averaged 64 degrees celsius in uh with hyper with the hyper 212 again that is a significant drop as well six degrees to be exact now comparing to the 800 rpm fans or the stock configuration of the ninja 5 PUBG averaged 53, Apex Legends 51, and Battlefield 5 58. Basically the same temperature, so the same differences apply versus the Hyper 212. So yeah, uh, I, again, we're not pushing this thing hard enough with the CPU. I'm gonna have to maybe look into upgrading my test bench because this thing just has a, a ton of headroom that it basically equalizes out regardless of the fans that you put on it in a typical gaming load and maybe even like a higher threaded load that pushes more of the CPU. Now, as far as the installation goes, because that is sort of a big deal when it comes to the CPU coolers, uh, it was very easy to install. If you had any questions on it, you could just refer to the manual on it. It's very clear as to what to do and how to install things. Me installing it on a Socket 2011 motherboard, Man, it's a dream, I gotta say. I just love the socket because it's just so easy to swap coolers off and onto it. The included screwdriver is nice, it's sort of needed, so it's really nice that they include it. And uh, the included PWM splitter is also really nice. I'm glad that that's included instead of you having to find two different PWM headers and sort of going into the BIOS to have to try to synchronize them. Instead, they have a little splitter and they just plug it all in and you're good to go. It's big, but it may not be as large as it seems. I feel like maybe some of the bigger ones from like Noctua are still just, they have much more of a footprint. It's still a big cooler, don't get me wrong. But uh, if you're worried about having a big heavy cooler on your motherboard, uh, it's not the worst. 
But another big question with big coolers like this is, are you going to have RAM clearance issues? And the answer is no. The installation of it, the design of it, it sort of curves up over the RAM and uh, rather cuts up at an angle. And then on top of that, when you install the fans, which are really what's gonna be covering your RAM on there, uh, the, RAM, the, the fans clip on. And so you can just adjust where they're clipped on. And if, it's, if you have tall RAM, just move the fans up a little bit and fit them under that. Speaking of the fans and how they clip on, honestly, I've had issues with the clip system, little bendy metal clip things to put fans onto CPU coolers. And I haven't been mostly impressed with that on some other coolers. However, this one was definitely impressive because the fans, whether that be the upgraded fans or the stock fans, have the rubber grommets on the side, uh, the vibrate anti-vibration pans, you slide the metal clips into it and the rubber sort of holds them in place and it makes it really easy to just clip it onto the cooler. I can actually go through and swap, uh, swap the fans onto it inside of 10 minutes, no problem on my open air test bench, which is really nice. So I gotta give it an extra thumbs up for the ease of just changing the fans out on this one because in the future that will also mean ease of maintenance. And so the question that we originally asked was, does fan speed matter? And I'm still gonna go ahead and say yes. Now, if you're just gaming, maybe not so much, but if you're really pushing your system, if you're overclocking, if you're gaming and streaming on the same thing, which is gonna definitely be more intensive than just gaming, then yes, it's going to matter. You're gonna get lower temperatures on your cooler, which I guess you could say could help improve the life of it, or for a lot of people, just have them feel more comfortable with the temperature that their system is running at. But it can definitely help you achieve higher overclocks, which is also really important. And so there you have it. If you're not pushing your system really hard, then I guess it's not gonna be all that important. But if you're looking at getting a huge chunk of metal to put on your cooler like this Scythe Ninja 5, then you're more than likely the kind of person that's gonna be pushing your system harder than usual, in which case, yes, the fan speed does matter. And on top of that, they're really quiet. Whether we're looking at the 800 RPMs or the 1200 RPM models, they're still very quiet. I, could, I couldn't even hear it. I could hear the GPU over the CPU cooler fan. So I found that very impressive. Good job, Scythe. So yeah, anyways, my name is Chris. This is Coalition Gaming, and I've been your computer technician for today. We stream every Thursday, 8 p.m. Pacific. So make sure you check the links in the description for that. Click the like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you uh, want to see more of our content. We always got more coming. And we'll see you guys in the next video. So have a good one. Bye. Yo, what up guys? Hellgate in here for Coalition Gaming. Thanks for watching the stream. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.